on a day when we wake up and the world looks quite different than it did yesterday, we need to take a moment and reflect on how we got here and where we go from here. And I'm delighted to say that we have an extraordinary array of our faculty up here. Uh, thank you, Willow. And, and really, one of the questions that I was asked this morning um, by a reporter is, you know, does the media matter anymore? And I think that's one thing that I, you know, certainly am struggling with because I spent my entire professional life with the belief that reporting, you know, accurately uh, about complicated issues has a benefit for society, democracy, and also has a uh, an economic value. Legacy institutions, all institutions, whether it's the Republican Party, the Democratic Party, media, large media organizations are all um, really uh, challenged at this moment, uh, challenged for their relevance, for the way that they resonate. Media, I think, in a way, is kind of more powerful than ever. And I think about this because of the way that media was used in this campaign. This was a media-centric campaign. When you have a platform, a social platform like Facebook or other social platforms, whose business model depends on maintaining interaction with the, uh, with the user, uh, and in order to achieve that business objective, essentially reaffirms everything that that user wants to have reaffirmed, that the traditional role of the media to report facts, however unpleasant they might be, uh, is really diminished, and it challenges that. Now we have media organizations who don't want to admit that they are media organizations who play a very important role in our democracy, and I don't see that really being um, acknowledged um, adequately by either the regulatory authorities or the media organizations themselves. And by this, of course, I do mean like, you know, Facebook, basically. Um, and I think that there's real consequences to that. Uh, okay. Mickey? Okay. I kind of want to address the climate because I was here very late last night and there were a lot of discussions about what this was going to do uh, to race relations in this country. First of all, you should understand that Donald Trump did not create this divide. America has never been a nation that fully embraced all of its collective views and celebrated those differences. So, you know, what I see going forward um, in terms of the climate is that although he's proposing to unite us again, I'm kind of not thinking that's going to be possible on his watch. I think that's going to be possible on your watch because you're going to have to be the drum majors for this movement. What I want to do is talk about the school. Um, I think this is a shot across the bow for journalism schools. This is a real awakening of how important this job is. And I'm not talking about kind of the, the light features we do or interviewing somebody at halftime, not that there's anything wrong with that. I'm talking about being the watchdog. You will be going out at a time when all branches of government are controlled by one party. This is what the press was formed to do. As Thomas Jefferson said, if I had to choose between a country that, that had, what was it? No, yeah, yeah. No government and a free press, or no press and a, and a government, I would choose the no government and a free press. That's how important it is. You've got to ask the hard questions. You've got to speak truth to power. You can't be timid. It, you've got to ask questions that might seem embarrassing at the time. You've got to call people out. And I hope that this really is for all of us. Um, and on the, on the flip side of that, for the people who aren't journalism majors, comm students uh, and journalism majors, we're teaching something called news literacy here now. Media news literacy never has it been more important because people seem to have lost their critical thinking skills. They are reading fake news sites, which are really abundant on Facebook and the social media. We've got to learn how to see what those are and not buy into them. That's the flip side of that. Make a smarter audience at the same time that we're making a tougher journalist. So let me share my frustrations with you. When I woke up this morning and uh, I looked at the media and there was analysis of what happened and there was projections of what was going to happen, and it, 
And I thought to myself, here we go again. It's the elite talking to the elite, right? We are all the elite. We are not America, right? And I think the worst thing we can do is blame the people who voted for Trump yesterday. Yes, there are racists. Yes, they are completely um, unfit people, clearly. But the majority that voted for him are people who don't have what we have. They're not the elite. And we need to understand that we live in a bubble. I'd like to, to talk a little bit about what the news media should be doing moving forward. I think, uh, first off, they need to decide how to cover America better. Uh, one of the things that was clear in the reporting in the run-up to the election was that there was sort of the, the, the standard menu of coverage. Uh, they would cite uh, employment statistics, which are pretty good. They would cite gross domestic product, that's pretty good. Lots of good news, but they never really got to the core of the dissatisfaction. That's what drove the Trump candidacy. You know, this was a, an America first campaign. It was an isolationist campaign on the part of Trump. And I would argue that that is unrealistic in terms of a globalized uh, world these days in terms of economy and defense issues and climate issues and all that sort of thing, but that has not sunk in with the public. And I think that in the, in the interim between the Cold War and today, the news media, both institutionally and in terms of the substance of their coverage, have not kept up. There is a reluctance on the part of the news media, I think, at, at least a lot of the news organizations, to grapple with just what the American character is and to lead us, lead the public, to reflect on that character. What should we be thinking about ourselves? And how should we be defining ourselves? What should we be aspiring to? Uh, news coverage can't dictate that, but it can stimulate thinking about that. And I think the, the news media have done a fairly poor job in terms of driving the intellectual aspirations to try to define what we are. Uh, three or four quick points. Number one is for those of us who are students of the media, uh, who that's what we do every day, I think we really, really have to ask ourselves, what did we miss? Why were we so wrong, and we in the collective sense? But it's also pollsters. Uh, who were really, really wrong. Uh, so that's point number one. And secondly, to echo something that Phil said, is we operate in an, a global environment in terms of trade, national security, et cetera. Um, I was reading New York Times today. There was an article there that said foreign leaders supported uh, Trump's opponent on a 10 to 1 basis. What that suggests is over the next couple of months or so, all of us should pay pretty close attention to the diplomacy language that the new administration uses to try to address that deficit. And then two final points. Uh, what does this mean for the Annenberg School? That's already been raised. Uh, I would welcome, as the dean of the school, I would welcome all of you to think about that. I hope this won't be the last discussion that we have on this issue, but I think existentially we have got to ask what can we do as teachers and students and citizens so that we have a better understanding of that moving forward? And shouldn't that be engraved into the heart, into the DNA of the Annenberg School? I think we do a pretty good job. We do a very good job but we've got to do better. Everyone has got to do better. Final point, um, mea culpa, mea culpa. I did work on one of the campaigns. I learned a hell of a lot. I was particularly shocked this morning, but I would urge each and every one of you to work on a campaign, a local campaign for school board, a congressional campaign, a presidential or gubernatorial campaign, because that's one way you really learn how these things operate on the ground, who gets involved, who has authority, 
who doesn't? So again, putting on my decanal hat, my dean hat, uh, I hope, Willow, that we can continue these conversations. I want to thank uh, Willow for uh, organizing this and, and asking her, her colleagues on the journalism side uh, to come and have this great discussion. But let's let this be the beginning, not the end, of a conversation.